In the last few videos, we calculated the first QED process, Baba scattering, and now we can use the same tools as before to calculate a new kind of scattering process called Rutherford scattering. This is the kind of scattering Rutherford actually used to predict the existence of the proton by bombarding gold with electrons. He obtained this cross section using classical electrodynamics. Let's see what we get when we use quantum electrodynamics. To start, let's look at the muon production scattering process. I know this isn't exactly Rutherford scattering, but while we're talking about, about this will make sense later. Now a muon is just a more massive electron, so we can treat them as the same in QED. The only difference is that there is no t-channel. We can write out the amplitude like this. Now this is actually the same scattering process we looked at in the last QED video, Bob's scattering. We calculate this expression by choosing the helicities of the incoming and outgoing particles in the high energy limit. But in real experiments, it's possible to not know the exact helicities of all the incoming particles in the experiment. In other words, you'd be colliding unpolarized electrons. If this is the case, we'd have to sum over all possible spins that incoming and outgoing particles can have, and then divide them by the number of possible spins to make it an average. This is just a statistical average. This isn't the same thing as quantum superposition. Now, it would take a lot of work having to calculate the matrix element for each possible spin, so there has to be a better way. And indeed, there is. Some old guy a long time ago went ahead and showed that summing the inner product over spins gives you this formula. And another person who equally didn't have anything better to do showed that taking the trace of these quantities gives you these formulas over here. I'm going to state these quantities without any proof since they will just detour us into a lot of messy algebra. But what's important is that you know that we can use these identities to simplify the unpolarized matrix element. Now, we can first note that the matrix element is a scalar, and the quantities in each of these boxes are four vectors. Now, we can rearrange these boxes however we want, since vectors commute. Doing this rearrangement, we can now employ tree number one to get this. But now what? Well, notice how we can rewrite this, this expression as a trace. Remember that the trace of a matrix is just the sum of its components along the diagonal. Now, since off diagonal components of the product of gamma matrices yield zero due to the space time algebra, only diagonal entries of gamma mu, gamma nu will contribute. In other words, the trace of that matrix. Now, let's focus on the first trace. We can do some algebra to get this over here. Now, remember that the trace is a linear operator, so the trace of the sum is just the sum of the traces. Trick number two gets rid of the odd terms. And trick number three and four is simplify these traces, where we have to use the fact that the metric tensor contracts vectors. Okay, let's pause. I know that this is a lot of messy algebra. It's completely okay if you're a little lost here. Computing matrix elements can get pretty messy, and at a certain point, you'd be better off using a computer. What matters most is not if you can fully calculate this thing by hand. What matters is just understanding how you would do it in principle. So deep breaths, and let's continue. We can express the matrix element in terms of the S, T, and U channels. While we're doing this will make sense later. Now we can calculate the differential cross-section for this process. I'm going to quote the formula for the differential cross-section for this kind of process here. To derive this, you'd have to solve the 2 body lorentz invariant phase space formula, which can be found in any good Q of T book. Plugging our values for the Mandelstrom variables gives this formula over here for the differential cross-section. Doing some more wackaroonie gives us this formula over here for the differential cross-section for muon production. We can now integrate this over cosine theta to get the total cross-section. Alright, but what about Rutherford scattering? Rutherford scattering is just an electron interacting with the charged particle, and positive muons and protons look the same in the eyes of QED. The Rutherford scattering corresponds to the same diagram, just turned on its side, or with time running sideways. We can see that the, that the momentum of the virtual photon switches from an S-channel to a T-channel. Now, this actual matrix element that we want to calculate looks very similar to the one we just did for the muon scattering. The only real difference here is that the momentum of the photon is now described by the T-channel, so we can really just recycle our answer, the matrix element, and just replace S with T. But in our answer, we add S, T, and U values. So what do we do with the T and the U? Well, if S is re replaced with a T, the only other option is T being replaced with U, and U being re replaced with an S. This trick that we use here is called a crossing symmetry, and is used many times to recycle the same old Feynman diagrams. Doing this, we get this expression for the matrix element. Now, what do we fill in for these variables? Well, in Rutherford scattering, an electron is hitting a charged nucleus that we can just pretend is a proton. 
We can analyze the scattering in the frame where the proton is at rest. Now, we can calculate these values for the motion variables. We can define something analogous to velocity to be the electron's momentum divided by its energy. Using that definition, in a lot of algebra, we get this formula for the, for the matrix element. We can put it into the differential cross-section to get this equation, called the Mott formula. Now, it turns out that when you actually smash electrons with protons and measure the cross-section, there is a deviation from the value predicted with QED. This is a hint that protons may not actually be fundamental particles, but composed of other smaller particles. We'll calculate the corrections from elastic scattering when we get into quantum chromodynamics, the theory of quarks. In today's video, you learned how to calculate the cross section from muon production, and how to use Mandelstam variables to calculate Rutherford scattering. In the next video, we'll look at our final QED scattering process, electron-positron annihilation. See you guys then!